Hey friends. I heard a story, I actually read it. It was in an email sent to me maybe 20 years ago. It was a long time ago. And I never forgot it. Now, I might not remember all the details, but it's a story that, you know, someone had sent an email to be kind of like inspirational and encouraging. And I remember the gist of it. So I want to share that story with you today. And I want to also tell you how God ministered to me through that story today. So story time. Okay. To the best of my knowledge, I remember a farmer uh, having a horse. And the horse fell into a dry well. It was really deep down into the well. And the horse was upset and neighing and kicking and trying to climb up the side of the well. But it was too, too steep and he, he couldn't do it. And the farmer had tried everything he could think of to get the horse out and nothing was working. Instead, it just seemed like it was just making the horse more anxious and afraid. So he thought the humane thing to do, and I don't understand why, but this was part of the story. He thought the humane thing to do would be to bury the horse right there in the well. So, he started to dig with his shovel, he got a big scoop of dirt, he threw it in the well. The dirt was really dry and it hit the horse in the back. And as that dirt hit the horse in the back, it gave it a resolve, you know, um, he didn't like that. So that horse shook around and kicked around. And the farmer has no idea what's going on. He just knows the horse is upset and he thinks it's because he fell in the in the that pit, that well. So it continues. Shovel after shovel full. And that horse is shaking it off and kicking it behind him. Well, something interesting was happening in, in the bottom of the well. The dirt, as he was kicking it against the side of the well, started kind of to become packed and he was able to climb on top of the dirt. And so the more that came in, and the more he shook it off and packed it in, the higher he rose. And so the moral of the story was that the dirt someone tries to bury you with can be the very solid ground you need to elevate you because that horse was able after so many times, that horse was able to get out of the well. I'm not sure if this is even a true story. Um, I didn't take it ever to mean that it was a true story, more like a metaphor. And that's how I took it. I'm, I'm not sure. But it stuck with me through the years. Because, you know, if you've been on my channel for long, if you ever read my blog, God talks to me a lot in metaphors and lets me see things differently than other people see them. And I love that. So... God let me know that the dirt that people try to throw on you and they just, you're a lost cause. They're, they count you out. There's no, no more hope. There's nothing left for you. And they just want to bury you. Can be the very thing if you shake it off and don't hold it on. Don't own it. Don't let that become your identity, what they say about you. 
it can literally be the perfect ingredient to get you elevated to the next level so you can walk out of there unharmed. So I started thinking about the Bible like what is what what story sounds similar to this horse being in the bottom of that well and I think you would agree Joseph Joseph's story is sim similar to this he, it's a similar situation it's a similar outcome and I just want to share it with you today so I am going to turn the camera around we have a lot to read it's in Genesis we're gonna skip around a little bit I'll tell you where I'm at um, you can read along with me while you're watching the video definitely read it for yourself and dig in that story I love to read about Joseph so we're gonna talk about it because I'm excited about what God wants to share there's some things that I feel in my spirit that he's gonna release out to everyone including myself as I'm sharing with you I also get encouraged and blessed so I want to hear what the Lord wants to tell us and encourage us about this story and then the true story of Joseph and his brothers and the situation of what happened and I, I'm excited I'm excited so we're gonna get into it and then I'll turn the camera back around at the end and share what God has released to me Genesis chapter 37 we're gonna read this entire chapter and Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan these are the generations of Jacob Joseph being 17 years old was feeding the flock with his brethren and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah his father's wives and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Talk about sibling rivalry. I mean, this is horrible. They can't even talk nice to him. They hated him so much. Especially when they saw his coat of many colors and they had nothing that special from their father. And Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And you would think he would not have shared that with him. You know, he, he already told him one of the dreams, and they hated him about it. And now he's had another dream, and he goes and tells him again, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father, and to his brethren and his father rebuked him and said unto him what is this dream that thou hast dreamed now his dad's offended before he would he was just like okay because it was about the brothers but now with him involved he's like wait a minute shall i and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth he just couldn't wrap his head around that and his brethren envied him. Look at that. Je they were just jealous of him. But his father observed the saying or kept the matter in mind. He thought about that. 
He thought about what those dreams could possibly mean. And his brethren went to feed their, their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel, which is Jacob, said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. He immediately obeyed his father. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. He was looking for his brothers, and he was just wandering around. And so the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he thou? said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are de departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. They were so jealous of him that they began to have this horrible hatred in their hearts and all they wanted to do was to kill him and they said one to another behold this dreamer cometh come now therefore and let us slay him and cast him into some pit and we will say some evil beast hath devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams so they're ready to kill him and they're already meditating on how they're going to do it and what they're going to say to cover it up, to clear their name. And why are they doing it? We'll see if his dreams come true now. Some people will try to steal your joy. They'll try to kill your dreams. They will try to stop you at all costs because they're jealous of your anointing. They're jealous of your the call on your life. They're jealous of your relationship with God. But don't let that stop you. Keep on serving God. Now, one of his big brothers is named Reuben. And he's listening to this conversation. And Reuben heard it. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness. Now think about this. They're, they're in the wilderness. There's not, this isn't a big metropolis. There's no passerbys that's going to be coming by and trying to pull him out of the pit to help him. There's no good Samaritan in this story. He said, cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. He was trying to be responsible. He was just going to tell him to throw him in the pit, then he would get him out later and take him back to his dad. And it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. That was a symbol to them. They could tear that up and hurt Joseph by destroying that coat they wanted to do that because they wanted to hurt him because it was a source of pain for them to look at it showed that their father loved him more than he loved them so it says they stripped Joseph out of his coat his coat of many colors that was on him and they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty there was no water in it See, that just sounds so much like that, that story about the horse. And they sat down to eat bread. Now, you know he's in that pit yelling and screaming for help and asking him to, come on, it's not funny anymore. Let me out of here. Guys, help me out of here. And they're ignoring him, and they're sitting down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead, with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. So, these Ishmaelites are going to probably do some selling of their goods on this wagon thing they have, right? And um, 
the brothers see it. And Judah gets an idea in his greedy little head. He said, And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? So what good is it to us if we just kill him? Let's get something for ourselves out of this, right? So he, 27 says, Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh. And his brethren were content. They were like, yeah, that's better than killing him. Let's just make money off of him. Let's sell him into slavery. That is so much better. My goodness. I'm glad that I didn't have a brother or sisters like that. Then there passed by Midianites and merchantmen. And they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit. And he rent or tore his clothes, and he returned unto his brethren and said, The child or lad is not, and I, whither shall I go? He, he's really concerned now. He's like, what'd you do with Joseph? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. Now they're covering up their story because they're evil. They, they have evil thoughts in their mind. They wanted to murder him when that didn't happen. Now they're going to make it look like some wild animal killed him. And, and this is going to show how much they don't care about their dad. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now or do you know whether it be thy son's coat or no? And they knew good and well that he would recognize that. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil or wild beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. Now can you imagine as a father, a mother, anybody hearing that story? It was devastating. Not only does he now feel like his son is dead, but he also thinks what a horrific way to go and now he feels guilty because he knows he sent him to go check on the brothers and jacob this is their father rent or tore his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days and all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him but he refused to be comforted and he said for i will go down into the grave unto my son mourning Thus his father wept for him, and the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. You know, I'm reminded when I read the story of Joseph being sold for 20 pieces of silver, it reminds me of Jesus who was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver by Judas. Remember that in Matthew? greedy evil evil brothers wicked concerned about themselves jealous bitter ready to have violence and murder in their heart to kill their brother now we know if we've read the story and if if you've not read joseph's story let me tell you you need to read it it's amazing We know, if we have read it, that he goes to Potiphar's house and he's very successful because the Lord's with him. But then he gets landed in prison in the dungeon and then eventually he gets promoted and he's the second in command under Pharaoh. So basically they were the most powerful nation in the world at that time. He was a very powerful man. So we need to think really carefully about what God is going to tell us in relation to this. Maybe you can relate. Maybe there aren't brothers that are trying to kill you. I hope not. 
But there are people in your life who will look at your anointing. They will look at your giftings and callings. And they'll be jealous of you. They'll be jealous of what you have with God. And instead of trying to get what God has for them, they will want what you have. They'll want your coat of many colors. They will think that God loves you more than he loves them. They will be jealous of you and they will try to destroy you. They'll try to destroy your ministry. These are things that we need to know because then we know how to act, how to respond, what the Bible says. So I'm going to turn this camera back around. We're going to read how Joseph's dreams come true. Then I'll have a final word. Genesis chapter 45 and read. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him, and he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. At this point, they did not know that Joseph was who he was. They knew him as an Egyptian. He looked like an Egyptian. He talked like an Egyptian. He did not use their language and he did not communicate with them except through an interpreter. So they did not know that he could hear and understand everything they were saying. So Joseph is now, he couldn't contain it anymore and he, he just makes all the other Egyptians leave the room and he's there with his brothers. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. It was such a loud cry. It was after so many years of not knowing, so many years of just blindly trusting God, that he was going to make those dreams come true. And here he is seeing his brethren, brothers, and and he just couldn't help it anymore. He couldn't help himself. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? Imagine, they've had his father the whole time. That's what they wanted. They were jealous of him. They wanted their father, not not Joseph, to have him. And, and Joseph doesn't throw it in their face. He just asks, is my father still living? And his brethren could not answer him. For they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved, he's comforting them, nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earing or plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity or a remnant in the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. How would you respond, do you think, to see your brothers that sold you into slavery, threw you in a pit, wanted to kill you, lied and acted like you were dead to your father? How, how would you feel when you stood before them and saw that the dreams were coming true, that you had dreamed, and they laughed at they made fun of you for they mocked you joseph didn't say i told you so no he gave god all the glory god designed this god sent me here to help a lot of people to god always has a remnant and joseph said i'm here to save that remnant his brothers they were in shock. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to think. And he forgives them. And he loves them. And he takes care of them. And he takes care of his dad. And he gets reunited. And it's a beautiful story. And his baby brother Benjamin, who's not a baby, 
but it's his younger brother. They share the same mom. I just, I know that God did such a restoration in that family. This is a season of restoration for your family. It's a season of restoration for God's people to come together in harmony and love and love each other and forgive each other and work together. I'm going to go through one more passage in the Bible and then I'll have my final thought. We read in Genesis chapter 50. And we're going to start with verse 14. His father had died and his brothers were with him and this is where the story picks up. And Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father, after he had buried his father. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us of all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger. They didn't even go to him. They sent a messenger to Joseph. And listen what they said, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, Forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. He was so he was just like crying and mourning the loss. And Joseph is such a loving brother. And here's the picture. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. Remember they bowed before him in the dream? And they said, Oh, will we ever do that? Yeah, they did it. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them, comforted them and spake kindly unto them. was about his brothers coming against him wanting to kill him wanting to kill his dreams but what about people who are not your brothers or your sisters what about the people that you trust maybe the people you go to church with maybe your closest friends church hurt is real being betrayed by a friend hurts so bad. God puts people in your path that will help you to your destiny. And even if they're meaning it for evil and for harm and for destruction, God means it for good. Just like Romans 8.28 says that God will work all things together for good. And we know that it says. That he works all things together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. He had a purpose for Joseph. It wasn't just to walk around in that coat of many colors and annoy his brothers. He had a purpose and a plan for Joseph. And Joseph felt it. He knew those dreams were significant. He knew they were real. He knew God gave him the dreams. And he knew that God was going to bring it to pass. And no matter how many times the enemy stepped in the way, God still brought it to pass. You may feel like you've been knocked down. You may feel like you've been drug through the mud. You may feel like you've been in the pit. You may be feeling like you've been in the dungeon. You may feel all alone. You may feel wounded. You may feel discouraged, disappointed, rejected, but let me tell you, friend, just like the horse in the beginning story, shake it off and kick it against the, the walls of your well and let that be building up a platform for you to just step on and just go higher and higher and higher. 
Joseph didn't let him himself get bitter. He it doesn't say that Joseph didn't ever feel the pain of it. We in fact we know he did because he wept. He cried when he saw him. When he was reunited and how God had put this all together, the dream that he never stopped thinking about. Some of you get your eyes back on the dream that God gave you. Get your eyes back on the things God told you to do. And don't look to the left or to the right. Don't worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about the people who want to speak hatred and lies. The people who want to talk about you and put you down. The people who said, oh, we like you in this season. We appreciate appreciate you in this season. Oh, you can, you can give us a word in this season, but no, now we believe a lie about you. Now we're discouraged um, that we're, we don't have that faith in you anymore. We don't think that you're able to hear from God anymore. Friends, don't give up. Love that person. Love those people. Pray for them. Not for anything bad to happen to them. Pray that God blesses them. That he loves them. That he pours out his love on them. That he reminds them that they're to love others. To to get their mind back renewed by the word of God. Pray that they see the truth. That the scales fall off. But if they don't right away, don't get discouraged and down. Keep going. God has been saying this in my spirit and I've shared it at my church. God has been saying, go forward. Go forward. Don't listen to the enemy. Don't listen to the naysayers and the people who are doubting you and they don't believe that God said something to you or that God could ever use you. Don't worry about that. You know that God talked to you. You know that God showed you something in a dream or in a vision or he talked to you and you wrote it in your journal or you just felt it on the inside of your spirit and you knew that God told you something. Hold on to it. Hold on to it with everything in you because it doesn't matter. In fact, the fact that people are coming against you like that, the fact that there are people who are um, bringing resistance to what you're saying and doing just means that you're on the right path. You are always going to run into the enemy when you are not going his direction. If you're holding his hand and walking with him, then you're not going to feel this. You're not going to have that resistance because you're walking. He's walking you straight into the flames of hell. He's distracting you, getting you away from your purpose and away from everything that God's calling you to do. But when you get your resolve up and you're like that horse and you're just shaking it off and building up a platform so you can get out of that pit then you will see that God is working it all for your good. Ask him, take that anger out of your heart. Take that hurt out of your heart. Take the disappointment out of your heart. And don't let any roots of bitterness grow. And when you do that, God will start the mending process and he will help you. He will heal your heart. The Bible says that he, Jesus said this himself. He said, I'm anointed to preach this word and and I will bind up the brokenhearted. You see, he loves those who are of a crushed spirit. He he will not turn you away. He loves you and he will put you back together in a brighter, bigger way. Do not get discouraged. I know that God is wanting to encourage someone to lift them up and to let them know that you're not alone. You're not forgotten. You do still have purpose. You do still have things to do for God. His, the dreams that he gave you, the ideas that he gave you, the promises that he made you, they are not null and void. They are still going to come to pass. He will bring it all to pass just like he said he would because he can't lie. He cannot lie. And he doesn't change his mind. Once he speaks it into existence, he doesn't take it back. He doesn't say, oh, actually, no, I don't think that's a very good idea to bless you like that. No, he doesn't say that. I know that it's hard when you've been hurt, you've been wounded, you don't understand things, especially when things are said that's not true. Things are distorted. People misinterpret stuff. 
but don't let that get you down. Let it just be the dirt on your back that you shake off and push to the side. And love the people that hurt you. I have forgiven people who have wounded me. I love them. I want the best for them. I pray that their church grows. I pray that their finances grow, that their families are blessed, that their dreams are, you know, come true that God has put in their hearts. I pray that they get everything good and wonderful that God has to offer them. Why? Because we are all in this together. We are all just walking each other home and nobody's arrived. It doesn't matter what position you hold, what title you hold. It doesn't matter. We are all hand in hand walking each other home and sometimes we stumble and fall and it is not up to us to look at our brothers and sisters who have failed us and hurt us and to kick them while they're down because they have fallen. They've fallen. The enemy has tripped them up. And you got to remember this, they have fallen and they need help back up and they need to be loved on and they need to be encouraged and they need to be prayed for. Why? Because the enemy doesn't deserve them. God sent Jesus to die for all of us. And that price, his precious blood is too costly to be bitter and angry and upset with someone who hurt us and wounded us because none of us are perfect i have the ability to hurt someone with my words and my comments i pray that i don't but i know that i'm human and sometimes i can be misunderstood or i can say something that i shouldn't say and do something i shouldn't do I'm not better than anybody else. I'm not holier than anyone else. I am still on that potter's wheel being shaped and molded into the image that God wants me to be. The person, the vessel that he can use. A vessel of honor, I hope. And I pray. And you have great worth, friend. You have great worth. And there is amazing things coming for you. Amazing things things coming for you and God is going to use you to do the remarkable in this last day it is time to be up and to be about our father's business and not let anything or anyone stop us or set us back and don't get discouraged if things don't always go the way you planned because God has a purpose and he will still work it all out for your good and for his glory and we the only reason that all of us are here anyway is to tell one another to lift you know lift up god tell one another about the greatness of god and the goodness of god and the saving power of jesus christ and if we can share that with others and they turn their hearts around and they surrender their life to jesus then we've done what we were meant to do and if we can't do that because we are more concerned about our own personal agenda and our own name and our own fame and glory then we're doing it all for the wrong reasons and it will not end well. But I know that God has a purpose and a plan for each of you that are watching this video. It is no accident that you're watching it even if you're not subscribed to this channel, even if you do not even know who I am. That's okay. I, I don't want my name to be great in the earth. I want to lift up the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. I hope that something I have said today and shared with you has been encouraging and has been uplifting for you. I hope something that you've heard on this channel has been strength for your journey and light for your way. God bless you.